Hello everyone, Alex again. Today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to AutoCAD MEP. This is going to be part one of a full video series, hopefully. Uh, today we're going to look at the user interface. Uh, we're going to go over the project structure, you know, the levels, the constructs, the views, the sheets. We're going to create a 3D pipe run, and that's going to be our example. That's going to be our construct. And then based on that construct, we're going to create a view and then we're going to create a sheet and we're going to drop that view into a sheet. Again, this is part one. If you're ready to start learning AutoCAD MEP, I'm right here. I'm going to help you. Hi, everyone. This is Alex with BIM It Up, where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. All right, so the first time you open AutoCAD MEP, you'll probably find something very similar to this. You'll have a get started section here, maybe a recent documents, a notifications and connect section. This changes from time to time depending on the release, but we're not gonna focus on that right now. What I wanna focus on this course is on functionality, AutoCAD MEP functionality. For now, let's just open a brand new drawing, just like you've been doing in AutoCAD. Come here left click so nothing too new here right we're very familiar with the AutoCAD drawing area a couple of things though we have here on the left side well in my case I have my user interface heavily customized so this may look a little bit different for you but don't worry too much about that I just want to talk to you about how AutoCAD MEP is organized so here on the left I find something that's called the project navigator and the project navigator is the project information center and here you have different tabs. So the first tab is about project data. And here you can store the name of the project, the number of the project, number of stories, type of building, little information like that. And then you have the levels, the number of levels that your project has and the elevation at which each one of those levels is located. And you enter all this information. I'm gonna show you this in another chapter, but for now, I just want to continue with the project structure. You also have divisions, which are the horizontal splits of the building. For example, area A and area B. Now let's jump into constructs. You can see constructs as a unique part of the building. For example, it could be the architectural level one. It could be a full architectural construct, which would include, let's say, walls and furniture, or it could be a partial construct on which you have like architectural walls only, right? All the walls in level one. And then you would have another construct for all the furniture in level one. So let's take a look. For example, let me open level one architectural. For that, I just double click here. And then you can see that you have a 3D model that contains all the walls and stairs and doors and windows from the architect. In a similar way, you'll find in an MEP drawing all the ducts, all the pipes, and that is 3D geometry. That is the actual model. Now imagine that you want to create certain views out of this model. Let's imagine you place a camera and you're looking at it from the top, right? That way you would create a floor plan view. You would look something similar to this. So that's what we call a view. It is a picture in a certain orientation for that building or for that section of the building. In other words, it's a picture of the construct. It can be a top view. It could be an elevation and it will look something similar to this. In this case, I'm just cutting a sandwich through level one, or it could even be a 3D view, something like that, but it's a static 3D picture of it. So those would be contained here under the views tab. Here's where you have all your views. So it can be floor plans, sections, elevations, details, and all that. And here in your views is where you create all your annotations, all your text, all your leaders, all your dimensions, all that. And then those views get dropped into sheets. And then we store the sheets right here. So this project navigator, if you're familiar with the sheet manager from AutoCAD, it is very similar, but it's like sheet manager on steroids because AutoCAD had a sheet manager, but it was only for sheets, right? This has constructs, views, and sheets. So that's the level of flow of information. It goes from the constructs to the views, and then the views are dropped into the sheets. 
But the best way to understand this, as always, is with an example. So let me go to constructs and I'm going to open my plumbing construct. It's going to be level one. And I'm simply opening a different drawing. I'm going to close the architectural construct for now. And I'm going to close that default drawing that I created at the beginning. So what I have here is my architectural background, which is a link. You can see it as just an XREF. In this case, keep in mind that this is a 3D XREF, right? It has 3D information in it. But it's basically the same thing that we have been doing. I'm going to draw a pipe. So for that, I'm going to come here to my ribbon, right? And the ribbon's organizing things into panels and panels into sub-panels. And then the sub-panels have different tasks that are commonly used by the MEP engineer. So by now, you're most likely familiar with the ribbon. You have it in many Microsoft Office applications like Excel or Word, and it groups similar or related tasks under specific panels. So for example, if I'm going to draw a line, I can have line, arc, circle in that panel, right? But if I want to do pipes, I have pipes here, pipe fittings, and some piping equipment that I can tie pipes to. So let me just create a pipe. I'll go here, click on pipe. And this pipe that I'm going to draw is a real pipe. It's going to be a smart pipe. So it knows that it's a pipe. And as such, if I come here to my properties palette, I'll be able to select a system like domestic cold water, domestic hot water. In this case, I'm starting from a brand new template so you don't get confused. So I don't have any systems. I just have the standard, right? Routing preference will be which type of fittings I'm going to use for my pipe. So it can be threaded, grooved, flanged, etc. So in this case, I only have standard. We'll, we'll look into this a little bit later. For now, I'm just going to change the nominal size of this pipe to, let's say, six inches. Okay. And I'm going to start at an elevation from the finish floor of, let's say, eight feet. Okay. So I'm starting my pipe right here and I'm going to go up in this corner right here. So I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to change my elevation from 8 feet to, let's say, 12 feet, right? So notice how automatically the pipe introduced the riser. Now I'm going to keep going in this direction, and then I'm going to turn south a little bit. And that's going to be my pipe run. I'm going to keep it simple for now. Let me look at it in 3D. So I'm going to click here, this corner of the cube, and that's my pipe right there. Right, if I want to see it a little bit better, I can come here and under my visual styles, I can change this to, let's say, conceptual. And I can see it a little bit better. So that's my a nice pipe, right? So let's go back to wireframe. I'm going to keep it like this. And what I want to point out is that this is a 3D element, right? So this pipe here knows it's a pipe. If I come here to the properties palette, it knows that it's in a certain system. It knows that it has a certain routing preference and it knows that it has a nominal size and an elevation. Okay. In a similar way, this pipe here knows that it has an elevation and it knows that it's located at 12 feet as opposed to 8 feet like this one right here. So the advantage of using a software like AutoCAD MEP is that you will be able to create a top view out of this 3D model you'll be able to create a section out of that 3D model or an isometric out of that 3D model and they will all be linked together because they're all coming from the model. So you'll always be up to date. So let me give you an example. I could easily come here and just click on section line and create a section from here to here and then give it a certain depth. Let's say this depth. And then it's asking me, where do you want to insert that section? Let me place it here. This is just an example. So Auto Academy P is cutting a section plane and looking north. And then it's drafting my pipe automatically. So you can see the riser. And then you can see the pipe being cut coming this way. Right? Now, so I'm going to click on do. I'm going to get rid of that section. And I'm going to be a little bit more organized. So right now, let's say my construct, my plumbing construct is this pipe. Okay. Now let's generate some views. For that, I'm going to come here to my project navigator. I'm going to go under views. I'm going to go under plumbing. 
and I'm going to do right click and I'm going to do new view drawing. This is going to be a general view. I'm going to call it V for view, P for plumbing, level one plan. And as a description, I'm just going to keep the, the same thing. The category is going to be views, plumbing. So this, you can see this is a subfolder. I want it under views and under plumbing. You'll see that in a little bit. And then the drawing template that it's using is this one right here. We're going to talk about templates in a different section. Let's just click next for now. And now it's asking me to assign it to a certain level. So this level is going to be level one. I'm going to click next. And it's asking me now, what do you want to include? So notice that in a view, I can include several constructs. I can include the architectural construct. For sure, I think I'm going to want that. I don't want to include the, the electrical, right? This is not a coordination view. It's like a real plumbing view. So I don't want to include HVAC either, but I could if I wanted to coordinate all those trades. So for now, I just want to include the architectural model and the plumbing model, which in this case only contains one pipe run. I'm going to click finish here and let's see what we get. Now I'm going to come into my project navigator and I'm going to open that view. So let me double click on it. And I'm not seeing my pipe. So the reason why I'm not seeing that pipe is because I forgot to hit save right here in my construct. So I should have done save first, and then create my view. Now notice that it's prompting me saying it's a reference file has changed and it may need reloading, of course. So I'm going to hit reload and now it's reloading the construct. Here it is. Now I see my pipe. So this will be my floor plan view for plumbing. I'm going to click here in the corner. I'm going to take it to a 3D view and let's see what we have. So you can see that I still have something that looks like my pipes, but they're not pipes. So if I click here, this is not a pipe anymore. If I come here to property, this is seen as an external reference because it's bringing in the pipes as a link. So this is not an element in drawing VP level one plan. This is a link, you know, and that link is a construct. I can see it right here. See, external reference, and which one's the name is the construct. I named it CP level one. The last link of the chain is gonna be the sheet. So let's go ahead and come here to the product navigator. We go into sheets and then we create a brand new sheet. I'm just going to call it P 1.1 and that's going to be level one plumbing. I'm going to keep the same sheet template that it has by default. We're going to talk about that later. I'm just going to hit OK. And I created a sheet. If I come here, there's my sheet. But if I double click on it, there's nothing on that sheet, right? Just a title block. Now, the beauty of this is that my title blocks are always going to be consistent throughout my project. I'm going to have them all here. And creating a sheet or dropping a view into a sheet is as easy as coming here to the project navigator, clicking on our view, and just drag and dropping it like this. And then here it comes. It's a little bit large. I think we can make it fit. And there you go. Now, we have to crop this a little bit. And in the past, you might be familiar with the X clip command in AutoCAD, but here's as easy as clicking here and just grabbing it from the grips and bringing it in just like that. And then there's your sheet. So I just wanted to give you a high level view of how AutoCAD MEP behaves and the capabilities that we have. We're going to look into many more capabilities. This was just a start. Now think about it. It makes sense. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click that bell. You get notifications and then you don't miss any of our videos. And if you're serious about your professional training, go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com. And over there, you can contact me directly for some professional training.